much, Maria Elilonia, alongside Cedric Phillips, to kick off the day here in historic fashion, because we are, of course, playing historic. And we have to decide, we have to determine who is going to continue on as the undefeated player, Cedric. Now, tell me a bit about this matchup. What do you expect to see <coughs> from the Selesnya deck, as well as Demir Control? Well, for Christian Hauk, as always, beatdowns is the name of the game. And for Tim, He's gonna to try to stop that from happening, of course. Now, this is kind of interesting. Both of these stories for these players are unique. You saw for Christian Hauk, a member of the MPL, always playing aggressive strategies, green, white here. Of course, in historic, we've got mono green over in standard. Perhaps we'll see more of him in standard over the course of the day. But for this Selesnya Humans deck, the most popular of the historic decks, but is it the best of the bunch? It was certainly the one that players prepared for as Hauk is probably gonna be taking a mulligan to five here in just a moment. And Tim McSavney has come prepared with a lot of removal spells, a lot of counter spells, and just a couple of win conditions. For Hauk, I think it's imperative that he wins game number one in order to mm -hmm. win this match because he doesn't have much to sideboard in. But a mulligan of five says that's going to be pretty difficult. Yeah, those opening hands were not great, but Esper Sentinel and Citalia, Guardian of Thraben, is a very nice start indeed. A second Esper Sentinel. These cards could help get him back into this, you know, just to uh, negate that difference there, having to send two cards back. Esper Sentinel is going to chip in here for one point of damage, and Tim is just going to happily do the mirror control things and uh, send that Behold the Multiverse into the Fortel Zone. There's line number three, so we are able to essentially eliminate the hand here of Christian Hag you as everything is on the board now. Literally cannot draw a better five card hand. <laughs> If you're Christian Hauk, it's not possible. <laughs> this could not have gone better. Yeah. If you tried, you're going to draw cards from Esper Sentinel. These Archmage's Charms are terrible. The Shark mm -hmm. Typhoon's terrible. Hullbreaker Horror could be any card. It's horrible. There's no yeah. time to cast Be Behold the Multiverse. And Vratska's Contempt is also bad. And oh. that's a really good draw. <laughs> this, that's a great draw. This is outrageous. This is outrageous. <laughs> Let's just, Let's just fire up the advantage bar early. Let's just fire up the advantage bar early for Christian awesome. Hauk. <laughs> On a mulligan to five, yeah. just a perfect hand. Incredible stuff. This is what he needed. That mulligan was terrifying, but found the right five cards. <laughs> and it's just drawn superbly. Here comes Hamlet Vanguard. It's going to hit the board and be a what now? Two, four, six, eight, a nine, nine? Trigger Thalia's Lieutenant as well. I mean, there's got to be a spell played in response here. It looks like it's going to be Fatal Push, and of course, that's going to trigger <sighs> Esper Sentinels, plural. Yeah. Two cards, here you go. Those cards you mulled, you get them back. <laughs> okay, collected you know. Company and a planes. So that's that's also ra rather humorous too, right? Because yeah. the Collected Company is now castable. Thalia was going to make it a little more expensive, but now it's mm -hmm. doable. So Ugh. no time to cast that card. No. Nope. Can't do that. Can't you're, do that. Like, you're going to be a little dead. <laughs> oh I mean, my God. Gosh. No fourth land either. Vraska's Contempt could possibly keep him alive, but not even. There's a 7-7. Seven, seven. What are you supposed to do? Archmage's Charm is going to nick one of these Esper Sentinels just to get in the way here. This is desperate do or die time here for Tim McSavney. And remember, this Archmage's Charm is going to trigger those Sentinels. So not one, uh -huh. but two cards oh. headed over that way. <laughs> we'll see if Hauk has any interest in playing Eclectic Company here in response to the Esper Sentinel or not. You just want to say that's fine because it's going to have to block the Hamlet Vanguard anyway. So Esper yeah. Sentinel is just going to kind of get flattened. You take four <laughs> points of damage. Now, Hauk does have the ability here to say, again, company in response, uh, because you could trigger Thalia's Lieutenant, you could also find Thalia's Lieutenant, stuff like that. So there's a little bit of consideration right now. And especially when you're giving your opponent the Esper Sentinel, mm -hmm. if you cast Collective Company, it's going to trigger for your opponent. But now you just let the damage resolve. You can play Esper Sentinel post. You yeah. can play Ranger of Eos post, or Ranger Captain of Eos, excuse me, post. Or you can just leave a company. I mean, yeah, this is this yeah, is unbelievable. No. Unbelievable beating. Unbelievable indeed. That's the power of the Selesnya company deck. And Christian Hauk definitely bought the beatdowns. He told me he likes attacking. And we saw it there. That deck performed exactly how it needed to in game number one here against Demir Control. But let's talk about the Demir Control deck. What does he go to now after sideboarding? What's going to give him the edge? Well, here's some good news here for Tim. He's got a lot of cards to sideboard in. You can see the graphic assisting and <laughs> uh, showing that. You see Shark Typhoon, Soul Shatter, uh, Noxious Grasp, Davriel's Withering, Witch's Vengeance. It's just more goodies. And on the opposite yeah. side of things for Hauk, almost nothing to sideboard in. These Brutal Cathars are 
pretty poor. So those are going to yeah. go out. Redain and Valor Stance are coming in. So this is why I said it was really important for Hauk to win the first game because he doesn't have much to bring to the sideboard of games. And for him to mulligan to five, have that draw, and more or less steal that game is absolutely huge for him. So kudos to Christian Hauk there. And we'll see if Tim can put oh something together. Gosh. But perhaps it's his turn to do some mulliganing. What is up with these opening hands here for Hauk? This looks exactly the same as the other one we just saw. It's early. It's early. You're getting the engine We're on the up. lands. Yeah, come on. <laughs> now, Hauk's hand here on the draw, I don't, I don't care for particularly much because he doesn't really have a one drop to get the party started. It doesn't uh -huh. mean that I would mulligan down to five, but I could certainly rationalize it, right? Because your first play is turn two on the draw, mm -hmm. and it's not one of your best plays on turn two on the draw like Athalia would be, right? So... And, and you're kind of gutted with three mana spells and don't have a third land. I could see mulliganing the five here. It would make some sense to me. Hey, it worked out well for him in the first round, on the first it game. It sure did. <laughs> Boy, did it ever. Oh, goodness. Let's see. Big thanks here for Christian Hauk. Does he like this hand enough to keep it, or is he going to take a gamble, risk the mulligan, and see how the cards line up. On the other side of things, Tim is on a mulligan to one, as Consider, Sensor, Archmage's Charm, and Behold the Multiverse. So, ton of stuff to do there. The hand does get sent back, and this looks a little better. I like I, I like the mulligan here. You're going to keep this hand. You have three lands. What card you want to send back is negotiable. Uh, I like that and maybe the Aspirant. I'm not sure if I want to keep Aspirant or Collective Company. I definitely want to keep Thalia. Okay, looks like he's going to put one of these lands back. Okay. Okay, right. so early plays and uh, something to work towards in that collected company. So we're going to kick things off here. Fabled Passage down on the board for Tim. And uh, Temple Garden is going to come in tapped for Christian Hauk. So we get things underway. Oh, well, there's your first of many removal spells. And also Sensor is going to play the role of a removal spell here in this game as well. Yeah. Talia that's... threatening on the stack. And that's the quickest Sensor I've ever seen. No, thank you very much. Get out of here. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Hold the multiverse foretold. Shipwreck Marsh comes on down. Consider available here for Tim. On the other side of things, Valorous Stance is in hand. Luminarch Aspirant is going to hit the battlefield here and start getting counters. Now there is a fatal push, so an excellent answer for this very annoying two drop. Oh, that's a perfect draw step there in the islands. Now you get the opportunity to go. You have the opportunity here to go push an Archmage's Charm your collective company. And that just makes this yeah. game extremely hard to win here for how on a mulligan to five. To and even, the multiverse. Ooh. even casting this and leaving the, the window open for company, you already have mm -hmm. one removal spell in Noxious Grasp. You're drawing two cards. Your deck is full of removal spells, so oh, you'll yeah. probably find another one. So even if company does resolve, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, certainly not. Now, does Christian pull the trigger here? Is he going to fire off this collected company? Or is he going to try and get to a point where he can Coco into a Valorous Stance to protect something from the likes of Noxious Grasp, Fatal Push, all the other pieces of removal? Yeah, we're going to see the company in response here. Those are fine um, enough cards, but they're not the scariest of cards. Eh, it's two twos. They'll, they'll do. Noxious, excuse me, uh, Torrential Gear Hulk, not the Noxious kind. Uh, just considering that, but a couple extra lands would be quite nice here for Tim before that even becomes a consideration. It'll stay on top, though. The draw is going to be Davriel's Withering, and uh, we're going to give one of these creatures minus one, minus two perpetually. See you later. The whole multiverse is the draw here for Tim. Going to pass the turn back. Ranger Captain of Eos here for Christian Hauk. And that's a pretty good card against uh, the likes of this removal heavy deck, but Archmage's Charm is going to say no thank you very much. Yeah, Away don't think you, go. you Don't think you can let that one resolve. You got a lot of life to work with here as well, falling down into just 18 yeah, from that it's, attack. So It's a stark contrast from the first game where at this point he was dead, pretty much. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. So this is an opportunity to use your life total as a resource. Don't have to panic too much. You don't really know what the last card in your opponent's hand is, but ultimately I don't think you're terribly worried about it either. So this is an opportunity to draw a couple cards, find some land drops. And, and, and the there goal in the short term here is just, once I get to Torrential Gearhawk, this game's almost certainly over. Yeah. Because that card's so powerful. So let's just make sure I can find land. 
five and six and get to that big creature. The massive body on the battlefield, it's a recast of an instant in the graveyard, so you gotta think as soon as that thing hits the battlefield, it's lights out for Christian Hauk, who is still just gonna keep chipping away. Here we're gonna see Sensor Cycled, Witch's Vengeance, a good old board wipe, and Avraska's Contempt. We don't see this card very often, or played very often, I should say, but it is absolutely excellent at removing and stabilizing your life total. Hauk's past two draw steps were lands number six and seven. None of those are creature lands, of course, so far from what he is looking for. Here is Torrential Gear Hulk now, and now this game has become a real problem for our Selesny Humans player. It is at that. Torrential Gear Hulk's gonna go off to Behold the Multiverse. We'll see Talia's Lieutenant get some, uh... oh, excuse me now, we'll see Valorous Stance killing the Torrential Gear Hulk, so we'll get through for the damage there. And yeah, just a couple more points through. You do have some nice options here with this Behold the Multiverse. Do you want more card drawing? Do you want more removal in Shadow's Verdict? You've already got removal spells in your hand, so I could see Verdict going to the bottom, Behold staying on top, because you do have so much life to work with. But really, there's no wrong way to eat this Reese's. You are super, <laughs> super far ahead. Something is going to have to go really wrong to lose this mm. game, and I just don't foresee that happening when you have this much removal. And on the turns where your opponent doesn't do anything, you can activate Castle Vantra. Yeah. It's just, you know, a complete lockout at this point for Hawk in terms of just threatening the life total here. I mean, these these draws have been terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yeah. And uh, he's about to lose his only creature, Noxious Grasp. So we'll see how long he wants to continue this game. But looks like we're going to go to game number three very, very shortly. There's a way to close it out if you do want to go that route. Hall Storm Giants. No need to get terribly aggressive with that card. You have such a enormous lead you know the only thing that you can really lose to is like you know back to back to back collected companies in theory <laughs> is is really what i'm thinking right now and that's yeah. not really a realistic concern so in the meantime little scry too yeah well this is uh tim mcseveny's oyster at the moment archmage's charm and parasitic grasp on the top of the library here will they remain there courtesy of castle vantress they will indeed yeah, that's just an enormous, enormous advantage right now for Tim McSavney, who I know our uh, our desk team talked about uh, at the top before this match, primarily a limited player. Yeah. Um, not <laughs> sure if he's a big Demir fan of limited or not. I suppose in specific or I certain mean, formats you can be. Blue Black has been real good in the last few sets. Yeah, it has been. The one thing I had a good chuckle about in his uh, player profile is that he absolutely hates constructed formats. Now, I've I've figured out why he's winning so much, Cedric. It's because he doesn't want to play any more constructed than he has to. So he's just going to keep winning. Just get, yeah, get the rounds yeah. over with as fast yeah. as possible. Get to those 12 just wins get and get out of here. And be done, yeah. That's a great, great approach to this. Look, if that's the recipe for success, I, I suppose I'm going to have to try it pretty soon. Oh. He has certainly made things look a lot easier in this particular game. That mm -hmm. first game, that was really something that mulliganified that Christian Hauk was able to run away with that game with. And so as we work ourselves through these kind of ending turns of game yeah. number game number two, it is notable that Slesny Humans will be on the play for game three. We'll get there when we get to it. Uh, but this is what it's got to look like for Demir in this matchup. You just have total control over the battlefield and you have too much card advantage. So the longer the game goes, the more advantageous it is for Demir. You just have to get to this stage. Yeah. And you see the difference. Christian Hauk is top deck mode, essentially. Whereas on the other side, Tim has so many things he can do. He can counter stuff, he can kill stuff, he can scry. The advantage bar is 100% correct right now. It's just a I can't matter put of it getting higher. this game over and done with. I can't, if I could put it higher, I would. If I could have it blow through the graphic, I would. <laughs> I could set the whole screen on fire on yeah. Tim's side. I would, yeah. like NBA Jam style. I would do that. <laughs> we'll have to put in a request with production for that. Yeah. Oh my another, goodness. Another removal spell. <laughs> How would you like to kill this creature, Tim? Okay, oh, there's a Coco. Oh, hey, there's it's, a card it's to gonna be a. It's going to be a no-co, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Coco and no-go with this nope-nope in uh, Tim's hand. There's a way oh, to win. Yeah, let's. Oh, hard cost shark typhoon. We haven't asked for that. Oh, in so here long. we go. Here we go. Come on, hard cost, hard cost. Tim. Actually, has, there's enough mana to hard cast in some arc mages. So if we're if we're just gonna go full fun mode, then sure. Yeah. Please, for us. Oh, disappointment goes on the stack. And that's why seven zero. 
Yep. <laughs> fun? You want to have fun? <laughs> Tim is out here to win and is doing a very good job here in game number two against Christian Hauk, who is just drawing lands off the top of the library. Allenbach Escort can chip away 18 turn clock. You got it, buddy. But nope, there's a big old hole of storm giants and a shark ready to pounce. Oh, I like it. Allenbach Escort coming in, looking to give Tim a little taste. <laughs> Come on in, buddy. Just a little Come on in. Ah, just a little taste. <laughs> oh, no. So Christian Hawk now holding those planes. Bluffing something. Hey! Hey! Oh, are we going to see it? Come on, Tim. Do it for us. Oh! Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. Gonna flex on him. Gonna flex on him. All right. Tim, you have won the heart of the people. Esper Sentinel, the draw there for Christian Hawk, and he's had oh, that's, enough. That's the one that broke... Broke Christian. Yeah. It was the yeah. hard cash shark type when you said, you know what? It's not all these lands I've drawn. It's not that I have no chance to win. It's that mm -hmm. enchantment. No more. It's the no shark more. that broke the camel's back. And so we're going to go to game number three here. Christian is going to be on the play, so is going to look for an absolutely explosive start. Once that perfect curve wants to get to collected company without Tim having an answer for all those threats. So yeah, let's jump in and see how game number three goes here between these two players. Any predictions, Cedric? Well, aggro player, uh, aggro player on the play in this matchup is where you want to be. You, you want to go, you want to go, uh, well, he already beat me too. You want to go one, two, three <laughs> against this deck. You want to hope that, that Demir control kind of stumbles and fumbles a little bit out of the gate. And as you can see with Tim's hand, it's not the fastest of hands. Uh -uh. You know, it's got to contend with Esper Sentinel and now Thalia. You know, his first land enters the battlefield tap, so now you get to, you know, you get to play a land. <laughs> and another you can go du you can go double one drop here if you want to, another Sentinel plus uh, mm -hmm. Escort, or you can just play Thalia, which this means that you're going to draw a card off a of Sentinel. So this is how it's got, this is how you want it to look. Heck yeah. As for Sentinel getting in for one point of damage, nothing going yet for Tim, as uh, we pass the turn back to Christian. Draws an, a Luminarch Aspirant. I think it's time we put some counters on some things here. Yeah, this starts the nuts. This is just like game one, except you have seven cards instead of five. This is just... <laughs> you got to respond and kill Thalia. That means you're going to draw a card of Esper Sentinel. Luminarch, As Luminarch Aspirin's going to put a counter on Esper Sentinel, which means you're going to draw another card off of it because it's a two-power creature, and you already have another one of those. So you're probably just going to be drawing two cards for every spell now. And if Tim doesn't draw a third land, which he didn't, oh. we're done! We're done! Oh, no. Ag okay, we're back live-ish. That land entering the battlefield tap's not great. He needs to get to five for a Shadow's Verdict, or it, he's he's toast. So I have a feeling Redain's going to have something to say about. That. Yeah, Redain's kind of nasty when it comes to four CMC spells. She's going to hit the battlefield here. An old Allenbach escort, just kind of like a little fun yeah. of that's hanging out here. Some yeah. relevant text. Yeah, just going to give anything that has a counter on it indestructible and lifelink. So yeah. perhaps we put that on Redain this turn. Yep. Yeah, that's what that that's what I'm good. thinking. Yep. Oh, and for the ouchies, here comes the attack down to 13 goes Tim. Didn't fire off that consider. And yeah, and that's not have much of a chance at this point. And that's so tough, right? Because you want to fire off Consider to be able to find lands, but you fire off a Consider, yeah, you get to draw a card, but your opponent gets to draw two cards? <laughs> Which And now they're, oh boy, well. Well, that would have been his second spell, so he wouldn't have had to pay for. Oh, no, you're right, you're right. I apologize, I apologize. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a Noxious Grasp. I'm gonna take care of one of the Sentinels. Oh, gosh. You could pay one. Feels bad. It does feel bad. The land of the Hamlet Vanguard. That guy's gonna be ginormous again. Ouch. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. It hurts. It hurts. Hamlet Vanguard's gonna hit the board. There's a 7 7. Oh, you have a, a Hall of the Storm Giants. Hold my beer. Basically, is what the <laughs> Hamlet Vanguard's saying. For three mana. A 7 7 for three mana. Now you can see why that card's included here. Is there any outs here for Tim? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't really look like it. This this is the exact reason that you play Selesnia Humans. It starts like this. The Sentinel Sentinel plus Thalia starts mm -hmm. are so good. They're so, so good. They demand answers, and when you're answering, it takes up a lot of your mana, and it allows the Selesnia Humans player to draw cards. It's just, it's extremely difficult. And we saw this be good enough on five cards in game <laughs> one. It's even harder when it's a seven card hand in game three. Luminarch Aspirants. Oh, 
Gosh, are we gonna steal something here? Yeah, let's let's just bring that over here. So similar to what we saw in game one, Esper Sentinel will jump in the way of the biggest creature being the Hamlet Vanguard. It's only four, five, That's six. Still a lot of damage. You have to if you're if you're um if you're Christian right now, you have to think about Fatal Push or some sort of one mana removal spell. Mm -hmm. And just like what how it works itself into the equation right now. I, I think this makes a lot of sense attacking, but the, there's a reason he didn't attack with everything right away. It's because it is worth considering. And so now you're able to get through all this damage. That's four, five, six. Get your opponent down to one. Here is the consider. I'm just trying to think of what Tim could draw. I don't know. There's there's no cheap... I mean, which is Vengeance? That wouldn't help, though, because these creatures are so big. Graben Inspector hits the board, gonna investigate, finds a clue. What are we drawing? Another land. So, big pocket of lands off the top of the library for Christian, but at this point, you gotta think it doesn't really matter. Consider finds a Fatal Push. <sighs> fatal Push plus Parasitic Grasp. He'd be at four. I don't see a way out for him here. Winning that first game in this match, so, so important. Mm -hmm. For for many reasons, right? The sideboard games don't get particularly good for you, but one thing when you're playing an aggressive deck against a control deck that has this much removal, this much interaction, counter spells, gear hawks, whatever, is you want to give yourself the best opportunity to win. What's the best way to do that? Be on the play for game three. <laughs> and it sounds simple and, and borderline reductive, but there are times when it's just like, look, my matchup's not good, but one thing I do have the advantage of is I just get to go first and just go one, yeah. two, three. And sometimes that's good enough. And in this instance, it was. More than good enough as Christian Hauk remains the only undefeated player at eight and O. Oh. Cedric, he is four wins away from locking up that top eight spot. What a great position to be in.